starting a new series called True Crime. Now, for you that maybe do not know what true crime is, uh, we are actually going to be looking at crimes that took place during biblical times in the Bible. Now, true crime is one of the hottest topics in our world today. I mean, true crime represents stories of crimes that were committed, some that are unsolved crimes, others they get to tell the whole full story, but it's from books, TV shows, documentaries, movies, to podcasts. You know, true crime, actually documentaries, are the most watched documentaries in the United States, according to Patriot Analytics. And in 2014, the first true crime podcast uh, came out. But just the past few years, there's over 200 new true crime podcasts have been launched. Now, you say, Jacob, what does this have to do with anything? Well, unfortunately, as a culture, we are drawn to the negative. And so they have taken a whole world of their own. But more than that, I believe that we can learn from people's mistakes, that we can learn from these true crime podcasts and documentaries. There's some good that have come out of it. I mean, unsolved, uh, unsolved crimes have been solved. And, and, you know, what they call cold cases from 50 years ago have been solved because the word is getting out there and people are learning from it. And what, what the devil meant for bad, the enemy is to, turning for good. And so I believe that we can learn from crimes that happen in the Bible. From things that people did that just weren't right, that were sin, that weren't... How can we take it and apply it to our life? And so... Um, so we're going to kick off this series at looking at the first crime recorded in Scripture, found in Genesis chapter 4, verses 1 through 12. And, and I am going to read all four or all 12 verses because you're going to want to get a hold of this. So if you've got your Bibles, your favorite Bible app, of course you can follow it on the screen as well. So Genesis chapter 1, chapter 4, verse 1, and here we go. Now Adam had sexual relations with his wife Eve, and she became pregnant. And when she gave birth to Cain, she said, With the Lord's help, I have produced a man. Later she gave birth to his brother and and named him Abel. And when they grew up, Abel became a shepherd while Cain cultivated the ground. When it was time for the harvest, Cain presented some of the crops as a gift to the Lord. Abel also brought a gift. The best portion of the firstborn lambs from his flock. The Lord accepted Abel in his gift, but he did not accept Cain in his gift. This made Cain very angry, and he looked dejected. Why are you so angry, the Lord asked Cain. Why do you look so dejected? You, you will be accepted if you do what is right, but if you refuse to do what is right, then watch out. Sin is crouching at the door, eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be its master. One day Cain suggested to his brother, let's go out to the fields. And while they were in the field, Cain attacked his brother Abel and killed him. Afterward, the Lord asked Cain, where is your brother? Where is Abel? I don't know, Cain responded. Am I my brother's guardian? And some translations say my brother's keeper. But the Lord said, what have you done? Listen. Your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. Now you are cursed and banished from from the ground, which have swallowed your brother's blood. No longer will the ground yield good crops for you, no matter how hard you work. From now on, you will be homeless and and wandering of the earth. So this story, we see what happens. Murder took place. A crime happened. See, Scripture says that Cain became angry and he, he was jealous. And I believe that, that he was both angry at his brother and at God because the offering, it went so well for Abel and God accepted his offering but did not accept his offering. So he was jealous and became angry at that situation. See, because sin was crouching at the door of Cain's heart, when God looked to warn him, sin, sin wasn't a hundred miles away from him. But it was truly present at the door of Cain. And in James chapter 3 verse 16 it says, For wherever there is jealousy and selfish ambition, there will be disorder in every kind of evil. See, Cain allowed anger and jealousy to set into his life. 
So much that he became all consumed. He was, he was angry due to the fact that, again, that, that the Lord uh, didn't accept his offering. Jealousy set in because he, he began to question God, like why, why was Abel's offering accepted and not his? And see, when, when we allow anger and jealousy to consume our lives, it turns into sin. James chapter 1 verse 15 says this, Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is fully grown, brings forth death. And that's not always talking about physical death, that is a spiritual death as well. So, what can, what can this lead to well, when, when sin becomes, turns into you know, more than just, it, it, it turns into death? Well, in Cain's life, it led to the killing of his brother. Well, you're thinking, well, that's pretty extreme, Pastor. And, and I would agree that that is pretty extreme and a pretty heavy thing. You know, sin can cause people to do things that they never thought they, were do, they would do. There's people that you know, maybe even you, there's things because you have, you have sinned against God and you were disobedient to what He says in Scripture and you did or you know people that did things that you're like, man, that's not typical of who they are. And, you know, no one really sets out to their life to be destroyed when life begins. We know we don't wake up in the morning and say, man, I'm going to make horrible decisions today. Hey, I'm, I'm going to, I mean, I'm just going to ruin my life. But sin causes us to do things that we typically would not do and we end up places we never thought we would end up. Because I'm sure there's maybe been times in your life or there's other people's life, you wake up one day and go like, how did I get here? Well, sometimes sin can lead us to that path that we never thought we would go. Now, I'm not saying that if you allow sin into your life and you don't deal with it, that you're going to be the next subject on the next true crime documentary. But, but what I am saying is this. Sin can and will mess you up. If we don't deal with it when it happens, then it festers in us and then sin adds on top of sin and top of sin. And we begin to do things that we never thought that we would do. Going back to verse 7, it says this. It says, sin is crouching at the door. It says it's eager to control you. But you must subdue it and be the master. Now, did you catch this? So how do we prevent that from happening? How do we prevent from sin controlling our lives? Because this is what we know. None of us are perfect. We will make mistakes. We, we, won't, we, we will fail at obeying God's word every now and then in our life. I, I mean, it, it may not be as an extreme as murder, but we may gossip about someone else. You know, we, we may, you know, it's tax season. You know, you may find yourself going like, hey, I got, am I going to do taxes right or am I not going to do taxes right? I mean, I'm just trying to throw out some scenarios to kind of get you thinking that sometimes we don't do things that God intends us to do, and we're disobedient to His Word, which is called sin. And when those things happen, right then and there, we have a choice because we can either do what Scripture says, we can work hard and we can subdue it, and we can become master, or it can control us. So, I want to talk about how do we prevent from sin controlling our lives. Number one is this, if you're taking notes, you got to look inward. See, we all deal with sin, but the outcome is connected to how we deal with it. See, Cain rebelled against God and he lied to God. He refused to face his sin and he denied that he knew what happened to Abel. But, but he knew and he knew that he did a terrible thing. He, he was trying to hide his sin because he knew it wasn't right. I mean, that's a pretty good indication if we're not following God's word and doing what God's, if we're trying to hide it from other people and we don't want anybody else to know, that pretty good indication that we might not need to be doing that. See, Cain, at this point, he just wanted to live like he wanted, not like God wanted him to. And we, we have the same choice. Each and every day, we can live like we want to, do what we want, how we want, or we can live like God wants us to, and we can obey His Word. See, we need to take full responsibility of our actions, our relationships, our thoughts. 1 John chapter 3, verse 12 says this, We must not be like Cain, 
Did you catch that? We must not be like Cain who belonged to the evil one and killed his brother. And why did he kill him? Because Cain had been doing what was evil and his brother had been doing what was righteous. See, at this point, Cain had literally put some blame on to Abel because he was doing right and he was doing wrong. And we can't blame others for our action. It was not Abel's fault for God accept, not accepting Cain's offering. Now let me ask you, have you or are you blaming others that life isn't going the way you want it to go? Are you pointing the finger at someone, someone else whose life looks like it's going well for them? Have you, are you allowing anger and jealousy to set in and you, and you don't deal with it? Because if you don't deal with it, it can and will turn into sin. And if you don't subdue it, it will master you and sin will, listen to me, will take control. Now, I know, I know this is a tough sermon. I know you're like, Jacob, it's Sunday morning. It's beautiful outside. You're supposed to make it. I'm just telling you, this is too important for us to not talk about. Because sin will, sin will take you out. Sin will put you places you didn't want to be. Sin will cause you to do things that you have no business doing and you don't even want to do it. That's why we cannot allow sin to control us. Because just like Cain and Abel, Cain was controlled by sin and it caused him to do some things he did not want to do i mean he didn't set out that day and you know when he you know at some point when he took that offering to god and said hey man i'm going to take this offering to god and 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 i'm not going to do it right and god's not going to accept it and i'm going to end up killing my brother then i'm just going to go ahead and lie to god i mean he didn't set out that way but that's where he ended because sin creeped in see cain denied responsibility for his actions Verse 9 of our text says, Afterward, the Lord asked Cain, Where is your brother? Where is Abel? And he said, I don't know. Cain responded, Am I my brother's guardian? And again, some translations say, Am I my brother's keeper? See, Cain refused, absolutely refused to take responsibility for his sin. God is giving him this opportunity to say, Hey, man, you've done something wrong. Where's your brother? But he tried to hide it and did not take responsibility. Now, I want to need you to notice this. Look how sin multiplies when we refuse to face our sin. Because he did one sin, it multiplied because he never dealt with the first one. If we have sinned, because we all have faults, we all have shortcomings, we're going to make those mistakes. You know, it's going to happen. But it doesn't give us a ticket just to say, well, I can live like I want. I don't have to be obedient to God. We, we, that's not what it's about. It's saying, hey, we made a mistake. We were disobedient to God. Now, God, forgive me. Not try to hide it and stack sin on top of sin on top of sin. It is to get rid of it so it does not control us. Because he refused to take ownership of his sin, Cain hardened his heart against God. And when... We harden our hearts, our hearts toward God. Things keep getting worse. Proverbs chapter 28 verse 14 says this. Blessed is the one who always trembles before God. But whoever hardens their heart falls into trouble. Romans chapter 2 verse 2 says this. But because you are stubborn and you refuse to turn from your sin. Let me say that again. Because you are stubborn. And you refuse to return from your sin. You are, you are storing up terrible punishment for yourself. For a day of anger is coming when God's righteousness, righteous judgment will be revealed. See, we have to look inside to make sure sin isn't taking control of our lives. And I want to do what Hebrews chapter 3 verse 13 tells us to do. It says this, that you must warn each other Every, everybody say every, every day, why it's still today, so that none of you will be deceived by sin and harden against God. So this is your warning. If there is sin in your life, just own it and say, God, I am, I, I, here's my sin. I'm not trying to hide it. I'm not trying, God, here it is. Because sin is not going to control me. 
I know I'm going to make mistakes every now and then, but I am not, I am not going to allow it to control me. God, that I am going to get control of it with your help. And so it says every day. Did you catch that? Every day we have to warn each other that we don't allow this to happen. That's how important it is. Because those things, those disciplines, those things that are important, that we do every day, this is one of those. This is one of those that every day we need to wake up and we need to say that, hey, I am not going to be deceived by sin. And I'm not going to allow my heart to be hardened towards God. I mean, we've got to make sure we do not do this. Why it is still today, we've got to. To remind each other, ourselves, that we are not going to be deceived by sin. We have to look inward. We have to take the responsibility of our actions. And then, so we can prevent sin from taking over, we have to look inward. And number two, we have to look upward. See, God revealed an undeniable truth in this scripture. Sin cannot be hid. There is nothing that can be hidden from God. See, the cry for justice was and always will be heard by God. Verse 10 actually told us this. But the Lord said, what have you done? Listen, your brother's blood cries out to me from the ground. See, the picture is this. A terrible sin, a a horrible injustice had been committed against Abel. He had been murdered. And God questioned, questioned Cain. He says, where is Abel, your brother? See, God wasn't asking him for information. One bit. He knew exactly where Abel was. See, God sees and knows all. And God wanted Cain to think about this sin, about the terrible thing that he had done, and that he would cry out for mercy and grace. He was giving him this opportunity to say, hey, man, I already see it. I already know it's there. So you might as well just admit. He wasn't asking him because he didn't know. He knew. So you know what that tells me? Is when we think that we are good at hiding our sin, we are fooling ourselves. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I'm sure that, that we probably have all done that. You know, we, we've sinned, we've made mistakes, and we try to hide it. We, we, well, we try to put it out of our mind and pretend like it never happened, or, or we try to sweep it under the rug. But we have to understand that, man, if it's sin, it's sin. And we've got to ask God for God's grace and mercy on that. It's that simple. God, forgive me. Lord, I've messed up. Make, it, you know, make me right with you. I mean, it, it reminds me of when my kids were little. And I knew they did something wrong, especially my son. He would do something and he didn't think that I knew about it. I mean, as a parent, I mean, you, you, mean you just sometimes you just have this, this, I believe it's the Holy Spirit gives parents gifts, this gift of knowing when your kid does something wrong, and you just know, you can just tell when they walk in or how the phone rings. I mean, you just know. So students in this room, you just need to know, don't try to hide stuff from your parents. They just know God gifts them of this ability. So it was one of those moments that, my son had done something, and I can't even remember what it was, but he did something that was wrong. And, and I knew it. I mean, it was like, hey, I, I, I caught him without him knowing I caught him. And I went to him, and, and I was like, hey, my son's name is Kobe. I said, I said Kobe, I said, hey, uh, man, tell me what, what's going on. What, you know, hey, I noticed this. What, what happened? And there's been two different occasions, probably way more than two different occasions, but I'm going to tell you about two different occasions. One time, he flat out lied. Like, he, did, he tried to pretend it didn't happen. He didn't know what was going on. Like, Dad, what are you talking about? What are you, I would never do that. Are you kidding me? That, that wasn't me. You better go, you better go check Lexi, that, that, which is my daughter. You better go, you know, he did the big brother thing. And, but I already knew. I already knew, but I was giving him a chance to come clean because I knew about it. 
And if he would have just came clean, it wouldn't mean that he wouldn't have some, some punishment with it, but it just maybe wouldn't have been as bad. And I would have said, you know what? I understand, man. I mean, I was a kid before. That was a mistake. But you're still going to have some consequences because you made a mistake. But you know what? Hey, you're forgiven. That, that's the easy route. But then those times that when, when he lied and said, I don't know what you're talking about, Dad. Man, the hammer came down. I mean, he was in trouble. I mean, it, it, it could have been, it, it may have been a spanking. It may have been a, a whipping because you do know there's a difference between spanking and whipping. You know, spanking is like, oh, you shouldn't do that. A whipping is like, you never forget it. And you can still tell me today as an adult when the whippings happen in your life, you know. It could have been those. It could have been literally, hey, you're going, to, you're going to bed early or, hey, you don't get to go hang out with your friends. I mean, there was, there was, there was something happened because he lied. And it was a whole lot worse than if he would have just came up front. Because it's hard to give grace and mercy when you're lied to. I mean, I can't help but think how this story could be a totally different story if Cain would have just said, when God went and asked him, hey, where's your brother Abel? Instead of saying, I don't know, if he would have said, Lord, I messed up. I allowed sin. I allowed anger. I allowed jealousy to get into my heart. And it caused me to do something. I, I let it control me, God. We could be reading a story of grace, mercy, forgiveness, restoration. I mean I, I mean, I don't know what it could have been. But because he lied and he tried to hide his sin, it was ten times worse. Cain was like so many of us after we've committed sin. We, we try to hide our sin and we, we try to push it out of our minds. But this is never the thing to do. And Cain missed out, what, out on what every one of us needs. It's to face our sin and, and cry out to God for mercy and forgiveness. And Cain needed to change his ways before it was too late. Because he was soon to be doomed himself of wandering the earth without a home. If only he would have repented and cried out to God, we could be reading a totally different story. See, Cain blinded his heart and his mind against God. He made himself think that he could hide his sin from God. But Isaiah chapter 29 verse 15 says this, What sorrow awaits those who try to hide their plans from the Lord, who do their evil deeds in the dark. The, the Lord can't see, they say. He doesn't know what I'm doing. And we understand that is so false. That's not true. But so many times when we make mistakes, just like Cain, we make mistakes. We, we take that scripture and we say, well, well, God won't know. This is not that big. He's got other important things to deal with. I mean, God knows all and sees all. So why do we try to hide? We need to look towards him for mercy and grace. We, we, first, we look inward. We accept it. We say, God, we messed up. We take the responsibility. Then we turn to God, not try to hide it, saying, God, here I am. Here, here it is in all its glory. I've made mistakes. Here's all the ugliness that goes with it, God. But I'm just going to lay it out to you because I know you already know it. And God, I need forgiveness and I need grace and I need mercy. I mean, think about it. I mean, we just talked about this story could have had a totally different outcome. Cain, Cain didn't have to be a homeless wanderer on the earth. See, if we would... If he would have not tried to hide his sin from God and take the responsibility for his actions, he could have received mercy. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He who covers his sins will not prosper. Listen to me. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. There's no need to hide our sin. There's no need. God knows it. And I'm telling you, if we tried to cover it up, we won't prosper in our lives. But whoever confesses and forsakes them will have mercy. So how do we prevent sin taking over our lives? We've got to look inward, we've got to look upward, and then we've got to look outward. See, Cain was so consumed with his self that he could not even think right. When, see, because when such anger and jealousy begins to show up in someone's life, 
it begins to, it, 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 it really says that, you know what, I didn't get my way and someone else did. It becomes that we begin to think more about ourselves than other people. We get so focused on our own life and we get consumed with me, myself, and I, we forget that there's other people around us. And when we get so consumed with ourselves and it's about us, then we want what we want and how we want it. And nothing else will settle. Not even God's word, not even obeying what God says in his scripture. We're like, ah, forget that. I want what I want. And so we have to be careful not to get so focused on what we want, but what on what God wants. When we want our way and not God's way, it can really damage us. Now, this past week as I was preparing for this sermon, I mean, I, I, went, to, I went to Google and I asked Google a question. I, I typed it in on my computer and I asked the question, how to focus on others instead of myself? I just wanted to see what, what popped up. So I put, how to focus on others instead of myself. And the first page of answers kind of shocked me. It was totally opposite. It did not answer my question. And Google always answers your question. <laughs> this time, it didn't answer my question. It had the total opposite. Every, everything that came up was this, focusing on yourself more than others. And I thought, is that what our world has come to? Is that, is that what we're living? Is that what we're doing? That it, what, what I want and what I need is more important than anybody else? I mean, can, let's not forget what God said in Philippians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. Don't be selfish. Don't try to impress others. Be humble. Thinking of others as better than yourselves. Don't look down on only, uh, don't look out for only your interests, but take interest in others too. So, when we get so fo now I'm not saying that we don't have to take time to make sure that we take care of ourselves spiritually, mentally, physically. That you've got to set time aside to make sure that you are feeding your spiritual person inside. That you've got to make sure you feed that. So that means, you know what, there's got to be that block out time that you've got to say, hey, man, I'm going to be here in my room. I'm going to spend time praying and I'm going to spend time reading my Bible. And hey, kids, husband, wife, you guys leave me alone. I got to get, I got to talk to God. Now, that's not being selfish. That's called wisdom. That's called wisdom. I'm not saying that we don't, we don't have to have those moments that we step back and say, okay, i got to take a breath and i got to fill myself back up again and take care of myself. I'm not saying that. But so many times we're so consumed with what we want, how we want it, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks or says, and we just don't even think about people because we think about ourselves because that's what our society pushes. See, God knew it wasn't good or healthy for anyone to be consumed with self. Because when we get consumed with self and things don't go our way, that's when anger, jealousy, selfish ambition, pride can all set in. And when that happens, it turns into sin. And if we don't take care of sin, we see what happens. It turns into more sin, more sin. And then... It causes us, it causes, it takes control of our life. And then we'll end up doing things we don't do. You're saying, Jacob, that's pretty extreme. You went from here to there. I'm just telling you, that's how quick sin will take over your life. So, we want for you to maybe not think of ourselves. Because this, <clears throat> this is also in church. Let me tell you, if we get too inward focused as a church... We never reach people outside these walls and all we do is think about ourselves, ourselves, ourselves. Eventually we'll implode and we'll never be able to do anything good for the kingdom of God. So we've got to think outside these walls too. It's just as important as we do that for ourselves, we do that as a church as a whole. And so I want, I want to let you know about this day that's coming up. And uh, it's going to come up on the screens right here. <clears throat> there we go. Our, we have a serve day coming up April 30th. Again, it's from 9 to 12 in the morning. And this is all about other people. 
This is a day that we have about five projects around this community that we're working on and getting the rest of the details that we are going to serve other people in this community. We're, try, we're working uh, with the schools. Uh, we're working with uh, the senior citizen, the VFW. I mean, there's a couple individual people that we're working with. We are just going to go outside of these walls and we are going to serve other people in the community because we are not going to get stuck on ourselves. Okay? That's not going to happen. And so I need you to put this on your calendar and I need you to make sure when signups happen that you sign up because we will have a table that has where you can sign up and there's going to be something for everyone to do. We're not going to do one thing at this church that day. That's I love my church day, which I hope you're going to be at. But this is about other people, not us. So there's going to be something that everyone can be a part of that day. You think, well, Jacob, I can't do this. I can't do that. Well, those things that you're, th- I, there's a lot of things I can't do, but you know what? I can, I I can do some other stuff. You know, I'm not good with a measuring tape, hammer, nails, screw gun. I know what their name, so I can hand them to somebody that knows what they're doing. You know, but hey, I can clean up the mess that they make. We all have our part. So I'm saying don't back out on this day. So this is an opportunity for us to make sure that we look outward. We look outward. It's important. So mark it down. We're going to have signups in the next few weeks. So uh, we're just, Easter's coming. We're focused on that. But I want you to be aware of this day. We have to make sure, so sin does, to prevent sin from taking over our lives, we have to look inward. We have to look outward. Or we have to look inward. We have to look upward. And we have to look outward. It's so vital. Because we cannot allow sin to control our lives. You hear me? Don't try to hide it. Just take responsibility for it and say, God, here it is. Here's all the ugliness. Here's the stuff that, Lord, that's not pretty, that I'm hiding from everybody else, or, Lord, that I did today, or, or, or God, I've been hiding this for years or months. God, here it is. And, Lord, I'm asking you for mercy. I'm asking you for grace. I'm asking you to forgive me of these sins. God, I'm done hiding them from you because you see them already. Let's look inward. Let's look upward. And then, Lord, I'm not going to focus on myself because when we hide sin and we do things, it's about us and it's not about other people. Because sin, if you think about it, sin doesn't benefit the people around us. Sin benefits us. Because this is what we know. This is what we know. The devil is smart. And he has made sin look fun and look awesome. He has. He's done a great job at it. And we can't get so focused on that fun and excitement because it feeds us that we forget about that it causes damage to us. It causes us to harden our hearts. It causes us to separate from God. So we've got to make sure we deal with the sin in our lives. we just got to deal with it. Now, I know some of you in this room, you're probably getting a little bit nervous about how is he going to end this. Is he going to ask, hey, everybody has got sin in their life, come to the front? I'm not going to do that to you. I'm not going to do that. Because this is, what, this is what it is. I can't, I can't forgive you. I'm not the grace giver. God is. And he wants to forgive you of your sins today. He wants you to stop hiding them. Because he already knows. So why, why don't we just look inward and say, God, what, what, if it's there, Lord. I'm owning it. There it is, God. And then we look upward and I'm asking you, Lord, for grace and mercy. And we repent of our sin. You know what that word repent means? We don't go back to it. We don't do it again. So let's repent. Not just ask for forgiveness. We ask for forgiveness, but then Lord, I'm going to repent. I'm not going to go. I'm going to do my very best ability not to go back to that. Okay? What a great message from Pastor Jacob. We pray that the Lord spoke to you through it. Now, we would love for you to connect with us through Facebook and Instagram at Cobble First Assembly. And if you'd like to give, we have three ways to do that, in person, online, or through text to give. Those will be linked in the description box below. Thank you for joining CFA Online this week, and we hope to see you again next time.